Alright, welcome back to We Play Games. I'm Walker, and here we are continuing our China Stands Up campaign. So here we're playing on the open beta 1.2 for Victoria 3, and we're going to be pushing in ultimately into cooperative ownership or command economy, but I think maybe a couple of decades we'll be moving through laissez-faire. But at the moment in 1.2, uh, Great Qing actually starts in Poor Laws. I didn't leave Poor Laws while we were in the Opium Wars. Might not have been a bad idea, but definitely once you're out of the Opium Wars, then you want to end it. Poor Laws is like 4,000 bureaucracy for us, which we do not have. And of course, Poor Laws are just going to be like devouring money from our, our budget. So we need to get Poor Laws out of the way. And then we can move into Laissez-Faire. And then maybe we'll even move into colonization. But the big goal for us, of course, is to get religious schools on the books. We might be able to get religious schools in this episode if we're very lucky. But let's declare a rivalry with Russia. I think that one is a long time coming. And of course, now we have an, an interest in Southeast Asia because we brought Selangor into our customs union. So we can actually make a dominion out of Burma. We don't have our line infantry trained yet. So I think what we'll do is we'll switch into line infantry and then let that penalty tick down. But we're, I think we're going to attack Burma. But of course, in order to move into not just Council Republic, but hopefully anarchy, we're going to have to play the game in a, a particular way. We're going to have to make sure that our trade unions and our rural folk are actually kind of mad at us, but still fairly powerful. So it's going to be an interesting needle that we need to thread. Yeah, let's go ahead and make Burma into a dominion. We haven't finished ticking down all of the way in regards to our penalties here, but we're just going to mobilize everyone, and that might be enough to just spook the Burmese into backing down. East India Company sided with Burma. All right, well, that's, that's potentially really spicy. If we can fight a war with the East India Company and win, then we can get a lot of extra money. And money really is one of the most important things here at least at the beginning of the game. Oh great, we now have no social security. That's a big deal, because it's 4,000 bureaucracy we just get back from the ether. Yeah, let's go ahead and push laissez-faire. It'll keep antagonizing our uh, our rural folk, but that's okay. Yeah, I would love to get war reps from EIC here. All right, so now we actually are at war with the East India Company, so let's see what we can do about that. I think we can naval invade, get our war reps, and then probably slice up Burma this way. Right now, everybody's just on a defensive front here, but that ultimately is good for us because, of course, every every day that ticks by, our troops get stronger and stronger because they're going to get used to the guns that they're using. Oh, great. We got laissez-faire. Excellent. So we do have enough bureaucracy here that we actually could go into dedicated police, but we also have enough bureaucracy. We could either A, start a colonial affair, or B, we could see if we can get the industrialists strong enough that we could bring them into government. They need to be non-marginalized, though, in order to be included in government. And so this might be a rare case where we would actually want to get enough authority that we could actually bolster the industrialists early. It's a very rare thing to actually want to do, but it is occasionally useful. Oh, the East India Company has way more flotillas than we do. Uh, all right, well, then I guess we're going to have to fight this war the old-fashioned way. But because we just have so many troops, we're actually able to deploy way more in our initial number of units than our opponents. And so even though we don't have control of the ocean, because the, the East India Company, of course, has a stronger navy than we do, we should be able to win this war. And then we'll switch over to mobile artillery, which looks a little spooky in the middle of a war, but because we've occupied the war goals that we need, I think we should be okay. Okay, we got East India Company war reparations. All right, we've defeated Burma. And, you know, we, we actually bled off, like, half of the infamy that we generated in that war. Okay, we have a powerful enough industrialist, 5%, that we can actually bring them into government instead of the Confucian scholars. That's not going to be great for our legitimacy, but it's going to be great for one thing in particular, getting religious schools passed. Especially if we can get religious schools and level 2 religious schools specifically then this will be huge for our literacy, which will be really great for us in terms of our tech speed, and also useful in terms of making people angry. Because the more literate they are, the more they're going to have a, demand, a higher standard of living demand. And right now we're able to really easily clear that. But as they get more literate and they get more wealthy, they will begin to expect higher and higher standard of living. And that in turn means that we were, we're going to need it. Of course, if we if we manage to get everybody angry enough that they become anarchist, that's even better for us. Dog, the Ottoman Empire is over here trying to conquer Persia. Ottomans, you guys need to conquer the rest of uh, Syria if you want to avoid the Tanzimat problem. Looks like the Ottomans are going to collapse, but they're going to do it to themselves this time. 
I think taking treaty ports is still going to be pretty useful for us because it's going to help us develop our, our economy of interests. And we really do want interests all over the board. So let's, let's start by taking one in Zulu. Ooh, and we can even offer an obligation to the Ottomans to pull them into our customs union. Absolutely. All right, so religious schools has dropped to 0% success chance because it fared poorly. So I think we're going to have to drop it as the, the law we're working on right now. All right, so we've capitulated Zulu. Now, we did turn them into a dominion. And so what that means is we actually don't have them as a border with Transvaal and Orange. So we can't directly intervene in those two, at least not immediately. But of course, now we have way more interests. So let's uh, let's see where we can get some treaty ports. You know what? I think we can take a treaty port in Mexico, to be entirely honest. So let's go for Sonora. All right, so I think we're going to start working on banking here. And then just egalitarianism after that. Then we'll probably come back for central archives and dialectics. But it looks like Mexico is indeed going to try to resist us. Good luck, Mexico. France wishes to enter into an alliance with us. I wouldn't hate having one strong European ally, at least temporarily. Sure, yeah, we can enter into an alliance with France. Oh, and the British are trying to puppet New Granada? I mean, they're gonna get it. All right, let's try religious schools again. We just need it to not fare poorly on the first roll in order for us to basically just let it roll off into the sunset. Do you guys remember when Great Ching invaded Mexico to seize a treaty port in Sonora in the 1850s? The only spooky thing here, of course, is that Great Ching really does need... We need a Panama Canal, and we need a Suez Canal down, like, basically as soon as possible. All right, well, that should be it for Mexico. I don't see how they can resist now. There's hundreds of thousands of Chinese troops marching around. I think the next thing that is important to our, our growth here is actually probably expanding the size of our navy. All right, we got the uh, the Sonoran Treaty Port. Oh, the emperor is intervening in the in the process to push religious schools through. That's huge. Ooh, now we can get Persia and Mindanao to join our customs unions via obligation. I'm okay with, with bringing Persia in. I guess we could do Mindanao too. So now the question is, are we strong enough to take a treaty port from Brazil? You know what? Let's try. We have a French ally. Let's see how it goes. We'll demand war reps and ban slavery. And Brazil backed down in our Diplo play. Awesome. And, you know, I think with this French alliance secured, we can actually can push some really big treaty ports through. But I think we're going to take an Argentinian treaty port now. That seems that seems right. And now we really do want to grow not just our interests, but also our bureaucracy. Because now we're probably getting religious schools through. Unfortunately, by, by focusing on religious schools, we are going to be surrendering some pretty high quality land to the Europeans for colonization. But once we have quinine online, then we'll be able to colonize in severe malaria areas without any real issue. Whereas a lot of these other guys are not because um, there's going to be a pretty serious growth penalty applied to any sort of colonization attempt without access to the right technologies. But we have such a gigantic cord population that it just doesn't matter. Ooh, yes, we got religious schools through. Awesome. Now we just need bureaucracy and then we can get level two. Because we really do want to just get our literacy as high as humanly possible. That one's a really big deal. Especially if you start so far behind technologically as Great Ching does. Now we're still 27 months out from egalitarianism. And I don't think we need... Oh, actually, there is one more thing we could do with the, uh, the industrialists here. Let's take a shot at oligarchy. If we can get oligarchy through, that would be enormous for us. Oligarchy is way better than autocracy. Oligarchy is way easier to have high legitimacy. All right, well, with the uh, the help of the French, we did beat the Argentinians. Oh, we can get Kiva into our, into our customs union? Awesome. You know what? Let's go ahead and take the treaty port in Sinai while we're working on it. We're strong enough that we should be able to fight Egypt. And of course, with the French alliance, we just have a lot of options that we wouldn't otherwise. Let's add Egyptian war reps as a primary and ban slavery as a secondary. So that way they, they feel like they have something to gain by backing down. Ah, uh, bummer. We got a really bad, a really bad roll on our first uh, oligarchy stab. So that's not going to work. Egypt, are you really not going to back down here, friend? You're going to be fighting against France and Great Ching. This is going to be pretty bad for you. But hey, if we end up taking control of the Suez Canal, I won't hate it because uh, we've lost the Panama Canal, at least temporarily, to the British 
We're just going to import tons of fabric from people. Fabric is one of those things that's going to be overproduced in any sort of peasant economy, because it's one of the main things that comes from subsistence buildings. Therefore, at least at game start, it's pretty easy to find lots of, of people who are just flooded with fabric. Oh, all right. Well, we uh, we landed in Egypt, and I completely forgot that we were invading over there. All right, let's uh, let's fix that up. Man, this French alliance is going to be pretty bu pretty busted. Awesome. And now we have just enough that we can push through our level two education. And yes, the, the education access is pretty slow at increasing our literacy, but it's going to have dramatic effects on the, the speed of our economy once we really get going. It's not like France isn't getting anything out of this. Uh, they, the Bahrain backed down, and so it's possible that that was a consequence of this alliance. But it would be definitely lying on my part if I said that we weren't getting more out of it than they are. All right, we won our treaty port in Egypt. Yeah, the existence of the Suez Canal is actually going to be pretty big to our economy, so we are going to want to make sure that we get that through. But we're probably going to have to fight the British down the, the road to make sure that Panama Canal exists as well. But now we're down to a really low infamy to the point where I, we actually can make these guys into a dominion without going through the 25 infamy that makes diplomacy a little more complicated. So let's go ahead and just make Dynam into a, a dominion right now. Ooh, we also could intervene here on the behalf of uh, Celebes against the Dutch East Indies. The Netherlands aren't involved in this, and this would actually be pretty good in terms of making sure there's more land available for our colonists once we're once we're ready to colonize. So let's go ahead and actually stick our nose out. We got egalitarianism. So that means that it's time for us to build a government that's going to be mostly in favor of proportional taxation. Obviously, it would be a lot better here if we had managed to get into oligarchy first, but I'm not going to cry over spilled milk. Let's go for proportional taxation. Plus 40k would be huge. And importantly, proportional taxation isn't just plus 40k, it's also a redistribution of taxes, and it's going to help out our peasants a lot while also hurting the upper strata a little bit. But as our economy grows, our upper strata is going to become fabulously wealthy no matter what. Great Britain has declared us their rival. Well, Great Britain, fine. We have an, a French alliance for now, and uh, maybe we'll even get a, an Austrian defensive pact. I wouldn't hate that. Ooh, or a Prussian defensive pact? Sure, yeah, we'll take a Prussian defensive pact. We're going to get standardized filing system in 24 months, and that'll be basically 1856. That means that we'll be able to push into colonization starting around then. And now, of course, Sulawesi is independent and ready to be colonized when we're when we're ready to do it yeah you know what why don't we just start taking some treaty ports in central america we'll take one in costa rica oh of course we need to dramatically increase our paper production though that's the biggest that's gonna be a huge problem when we hit uh central archives so let's start working on that now oh no it's begun we're at minus 10 percent now versus the original please proportional taxation you're not our only hope, but you'd be really useful, and that's something. Costa Rica didn't back down. That's shameful, Costa Rica. Why are you fighting us? You're crazy. Oh, we, we didn't draw up a really punitive peace treaty, I think that's why. So dyes are one of these things that there's a lot of countries start with overbuilt and no real way to use them. And so if you want to create a really easy working relationship with someone, try to import sugar, try to import dyes. Those are things that a lot of these agricultural countries basically have zero demand for. And so by importing them, we're going to be increasing the volume of trade between our markets, but it's also going to be just create, capturing a whole lot of productivity because a lot of those goods are basically just rotting on the shelf. You also start out with just a ridiculous amount of coffee in the world that nobody wants, and so the, it's really easy for you to just gain lots of money uh, just trading. Ooh, all right, so we have a Republican in control of the armed forces now. That's, unfortunately, we can't work with that. But we can push the armed forces out of government, just work with the rural folk on proportional taxation. Man, we're, we're getting clobbered there, but we'll get, we'll get it eventually, I'm sure. Let's go ahead and start bolstering our rural folk, at least temporarily. You know, we don't need a treaty port in Sweden in order to meet the requirements for the treaty port thing, I don't think, but... A treaty port in Sweden would be economically very beneficial. Yeah, you know what? Let's take a treaty port in Gotland. 
And we're not going to take anything else, right? We're not necessarily aiming at, at making Sweden a rival of ours. We just want to have a land border with them through Gotland, one that we can use for lots and lots of trade. Oh, and the Dutch East Indies are trying to annex Tidor? I, well, you know, we've already messed them up once. We might as well do it again. Oh, and Spain sided with the Dutch East Indies against us? All right, Spain has declared us a rival. We'll, uh, we'll rival them back. I'm fine with that. And Sweden has backed down. Awesome, so we have control of Visby now. I'm really hoping that we can get proportional taxation through, because um, we really do need more money. But if we don't get there, we are building our, the size of our investment pool, right? The more that we construct, especially industrial buildings, the more we have money flowing through the hands of capitalists. And right now, they are generating tons of extra investment pool for us. Oh boy. And we hit central archives. So yeah, let's let's uh, turn on central archives before, before we go. There we go. 10k bureaucracy. So if we don't get proportional taxation, we'll flip over to a, an easier law to pass, something that gets us an institution that we can grow, and then we'll keep using that institution to keep turning this literacy. The biggest thing, of course, holding us back in terms of our literacy right now as Great Ching is just how many peasants we have. We still have 79% peasants, and so that means that the average wage for people is just going to be pretty low. Lower wages across the board means, it means lower literacy from wealth, but that seems like a fixable problem. Oh, September 13th. Are we going to get it? Oh, it failed to gain traction. All right. Well, we'll have to we'll have to come up with a different plan here. But the armed forces, even though they have a Republican leader now, are still going to be fairly useful to us, I think, because they'll allow us to push into colonial resettlement. And that that's going to be huge for us. So yeah, let's see what we can do in terms of colonization with our next episode. I think that's where we we really are set up because we're pretty close, actually, to being able to just push through to quinine. And with quinine on the books, basically all of Central Africa will be ours. All right, that's Walker. Take care.